Nine months ago, General Electric released the first combo all-in-one washer dryer in the United States with a heat pump. That unit had a few amazing, unique features at the time. It operated on 120 volts of electricity. It did not have a vent behind the unit, and you could essentially put your clothes in it, press the button, and it would wash and dry your clothes, leaving you having to do nothing. And as far as I can tell, being an appliance salesperson, it seems like this may have been the fastest or one of the fastest selling appliances in history, which is to say that other companies were not going to be very far behind. So in January of 2024, this year, LG released their competitor to the GE all-in-one unit, the WM6998H model. And similarly, the LG version is ventless, 120 volts in an all-in-one unit, but the size and functionality of it is a little bit different. But which unit is actually better for your household? Does one unit specifically have an advantage over another? Well, we're going to test that today. I happened to have both of these units. I was going to give away this GE to a needy family and their house hadn't actually got fixed until very, very recently. So let's get these tests done before they come and get the unit for their household. But if you don't have the next 20 or 30 minutes to make a full on decision, I would say that if I had to choose one combo over another, I would definitely choose Buffalo Blue Cheese. First, let's talk size because it could affect anything you want to do when considering a unit. It's pretty clear that the GE is a bit larger at 28 inches wide, 47 inches tall, and 31 inches deep. Comparatively, the LG is 27 inches wide, 39 inches tall, and 33 inches deep. At the front, the GE has a more curved glass on the door, which protrudes slightly more than the LG flat door. But at the rear of the unit, the LG's metal cover bulges out quite a bit, making theirs slightly deeper than the GE. Weight-wise, the LG is significantly lighter at an estimated 246.9 pounds, while the GE stands at a net weight of 302 pounds. As a note, I myself could personally move the LG combo unit around the room via a dolly, whereas the additional weight of the GE totally prevented me from moving it easily, and both are heavier than a standalone washer that is of a similar size. For example, an LG washer is about 190 pounds net weight. The LG combo has a drum capacity of 5.0 cubic feet, while the GE has a drum capacity of 4.8 cubic feet, and as a note, this is for the wash and dry. Typically, a similar size dryer will have a much larger capacity. When talking about interfaces, the GE interface has a flat face with all the options you see here. There are 12 primary wash modes on the unit, and there's also the download selection that adds four additional choices via the Smart HQ app. Soil, temp, and spin can generally be modified on most modes. You can also press the wash or dry button that you see here, to make any mode wash or dry only. You also have extra options on the right for more water, a rinse, timed dry, and a few other modes. The menu at the bottom also allows you a few additional choices for more customization of your combo washer and dryer, and there are up and down arrows to adjust timed features. The LG Combo has a turn dial that allows you to select in order 15 different wash and dry options. The unit also has, in addition to the dial, a control on the right side that allows you to select temp, spin, and soil options, as well as steam option, extra rinse, delay start, and other additional options. It also has a dry button that lets you use an energy saving mode or a normal dry profile, as well as adjust for timed dry. You can also customize the 15 cycles that are on the dial, and the machine has a total of about 30 different wash options that you can employ. The GE Smart HQ is extremely basic. You can select a few additional modes during the wash and dry cycle if you wanted to add, for example, a rinse or extra dry time. You can also download those additional four cycles that I mentioned earlier, and it will let you know how many times you've used the machine as well as smart dispensing options. On the LG side, the LG Think app is far more robust. It allows you to change anything on the machine through the app that you could essentially on the dial. Everything can be programmed, and you can also utilize the remote start on the machine to allow the, it to start from the app 
it will lock the door prior to programming and you do have to program it for a remote start from the dial. And you can also reprogram what modes physically turn the dial through the app, which offers also enhanced explanations of what each of these additional modes do. The app also features a wattage meter that shows you what the unit consumes. We found it to be about 15% within what the kilowatt meter would disclose and the app will tell you that as well. Next, let's go ahead and do some wash and dry comparisons head to head. We're using identical loads in each unit. And for the first load, we're going to use an eight pound smaller load of mixed garments, hand towels and such, which fills up the machine about 60% of the washing machine drum. We're selecting the normal default cycle with all the default options on the unit. And note that over time, either machine's going to adapt to your typical wash and dry load, which could adjust these values once you get one into the house. And on the first GE wash, we're going to see one hour and 49 minutes for the wash and dry. As the load was sensing, the machine did adjust the time as reported through the app. The real world time actually adjusted to two hours and five minutes. We used water flow meters on all the tests. And for the first test of the GE washing machine, it used 11 gallons of cold water and 2.4 gallons of hot water. The GE used 1.41 kilowatt hours of electricity in its two hour cycle. The clothes were fully dried as we pulled them out, but as always on this type of combo unit, the clothes feel oddly damp, but as soon as you inspect them, they feel fully dry. If you've never used a combo washer dryer like this, it's something to adjust to. Next, let's put the same load of clothes in the LG 2-in-1 unit. We're setting the unit on normal wash and dry mode, much like we did with the GE. The initial wash and dry time as stated on the dial is two hours and 59 minutes, which is significantly higher. With the unit running, I will note that once we began running the unit, it did adjust the time downwards by 22 minutes for an approximate runtime of two hours and 37 minutes once everything was said and done. For power and electric consumption, the LG unit used 1.13 kilowatt hours of electricity and it uses 11 gallons of cold water and one and a half gallon of hot water as per our meter. When I removed the clothes from the LG unit, they were just as dry as the GE. For a lint buildup, here's what we observed on the GE filter. It was scattered pretty thickly over the unit and once removed created a pretty reasonable ball of lint, which requires you to run your hand over to properly remove it from the plastic mesh filter. The LG filter, alternatively, is removed from the top of the unit and when you pull the housing out, it scrapes all the lint into the front of the filter. Both of the units use a similarly identical mesh filter in the construction of both. Comparatively, this is how much lint that we've pulled from each unit, the LG and GE units. I did the wash and dry first on the GE, so it's probable that more lint was collected from the same identical clothing on the first load than the second, but I thought it was worth mentioning this. For the second test, we are putting a queen size comforter in the units, first in the GE, then the LG. The comforter takes up most room in both units. You could possibly add a sheet or some pillow cases to it if you wanted to though. For this test, we are adding the most amount of water possible on both units. In the case of the GE, this is one extra rinse and more water selected. The total runtime initially on this unit is three hours and 13 minutes, which the rinse did add some of that time. Now this is where it gets a little bit odd on the video. As soon as the machine detects the comforter, it drops the total runtime down to just two hours. All of this change was due to the sensor dry dropping from one hour and 54 minutes down to 38 minutes, which quite frankly is strange. In my tests though with the LG in the previous video, this did happen a few times where the AI just does not realize the correct time for the, the item. I took a smart phone with a decibel meter to test the, and capture the noise levels on the units. During the operation of the GE ultra fast combo, we had the noise level being identified from about four feet away. In the wash mode, the GE ultra fast combo ran at approximately 56 decibels on average when agitating. In spin mode, the unit peaked at 76 decibels on average according to the meter. And then finally in the drying mode with the heat pump, it averaged 67 decibels, but depending on when we sampled the noise level, it was between 65 and 67 consistently. On the meters, the GE used 16.4 gallons of cold water and 9.7 gallons of warm water on the extra rinse and extra water feature. The unit used 1.13 kilowatt hours of electricity 
in its 2 hour and 14 minute total cycle. As I somewhat expected though, the 38 minute dry time was not sufficient to fully dry the clothes. It got it quite good but not fully dry. I went ahead and put it back in for an extra 20 minutes of drying time using the time to dry setting and it was slightly closer to the initial default time estimate the unit gave. This worked perfectly to dry the comforter and this adjusted the total amount of kilowatts used from 1.13 up to about 1.4 kilowatt hours of electricity in a 2 hour and 30 minute timed cycle. During this test, we decided to add our Elitech data logger to the inside of the unit to observe the heat generated during the dry cycles. For the first test on the GE, we observed a peak temperature of 123 degrees during its 58 minute drying cycle between the initial sensor dry and the added time to dry. It was still ramping up the heat as we ended the cycle, which is typical for any of these combo units. Now let's take the comforter and put it in the LG. Unlike the GE, the bedding option is wash only. We're going to use, like the GE, a maximum water setting to see what happens. It's a plus three rinse cycle, and much like the GE, it adds extra wash time for each rinse. The total run time on just the wash mode is one hour and 42 minutes, whereas the default normal bedding time would be exactly at one hour, identical to the GE. During the LG bedding test, we use the same decibel meter at the same distance away from the machine. I observed the wash action at 55 decibels. The spin noise was much lower than the GE at a peak of 67 decibels. And then finally, the drying action peaked at 67 to 68 decibels, which was slightly higher than the GE on average, at least for the dry and heat pump modes. For what it's worth, I would attribute the lower peak spin noise due to the direct drive motor that we inspected in the LG video. Comparatively, the GE combo uses a motor and belt system with an inverter, which is not as efficient or as quiet as the GE unit. Although it's very rare for any system to have issues in general, I tend to favor the direct drive motor for a washing machine. Once the wash was done with the LG comforter, we set the bedding for a dry only cycle. The initial dry time for the queen size comforter was two hours and 12 minutes. So in a normal one hour bedding wash, the total runtime would have been three hours and 12 minutes. When the load was done, the comforter was fully dried, but it was slightly moist again upon removal, but once removed, it felt perfectly dry. When it came to the water and electric consumption, the plus three rinse was, well, insane. According to my flow meter, it used 47.7 gallons of cold water and 4.2 gallons of hot water. On the electric consumption side, the unit used a total of 1.22 kilowatts hours of electricity, which was almost identical to the GE unit, but was over a longer period of time. On our data logging graph, the LG dryer reached a peak temperature of 119.4 degrees right before it finished its main cycle. Now for the final test, we are doing a heavy bedding and towel load. To the basket, we are adding six towels, then three heavy full-size blankets, and then a thick hand towel. The total weight as per the scale is 5.5 kilograms. Why it was in kilos, I don't know, but it was 12 pounds if you are using the Imperial system. Loading in the 5.5 kilos of bedding in the GE Ultrafast Combo put this unit basically at its maximum possible load. This is a great way to test the unit being absolutely positively full of heavy items. Rather than use the bulky bedding setting, we went to towels since the majority of the weight are with the towels in the unit, which are thicker than the bedding, and it ran with an extra rinse, but not a extra water setting. And like the last load, the AI changed the time once again when it began to wash and dry. The sensor dry dropped to one hour and 13 minutes, which was more than the last load, but I don't think that will be enough. Similarly, we had something again like this happen on the LG off camera in the first video, which seems to happen with these combos. Sadly, when we took the bedding out, my camera decided to fall over and lose the filming at this point. But when I removed the bedding at the two hour and 30 minute mark, an interesting thing happened. The three blankets we put in were completely and fully dry, but the heavier towels were not. I am unsure why this happened, but it's possible that due to overloading, the sensors failed to detect that the full load wasn't dry, but part of it was. At any rate, we reset the timed dry for an additional 45 minutes and the total run time between the wash and dry was three hours and 20 minutes all included. For electric and water, the unit consumed 2.1 kilowatt hours of electricity and used 9.7 gallons of hot water 
and 16.4 gallons of cold water in the wash and dry using the extra rinse. As per the Elitech data logger, the unit reached a peak temperature of 152.2 degrees Fahrenheit. The initial sensor dry saw the temperature peak a little bit lower at 122.9 degrees Fahrenheit, which is why you see the two peaks on this chart. For the final test, during wash and dry, we are loading the LG with the identical heavy bedding and towel load at 5.5 kilos. The LG washer dryer combo is slightly larger with the 12 pounds loaded, and you can tell there's a little bit more room in the LG than the GE, but not by much. For this load, we're using the towel setting with one extra rinse, just like the GE. The initial wash time for this was 58 minutes with the extra rinse, but as per the LG app when I ran it, it actually took one hour and 10 minutes. Off camera, I should have recorded this, but I noticed that the reason this was the case was it took the LG a bit more time to spin the bedding out it extracted a ton of water during this mode, but it did so as it slowly ramped up. It would run for two or three minutes to spin, stop, drain the water, and then would progressively run faster and faster, which was really cool to watch. Now, once that was done for the separate drying time, using the dry only setting, it initially showed a total time of three hours and 35 minutes for drying. During the drying process, the real world dry time was 3 hours and 42 minutes. For the temperature chart on the LG, it showed that the heat pump reached a maximum temperature of an impressive 138 degrees Fahrenheit, but it took 3 hours to achieve this number, whereas the GE was able to dry hotter in a much shorter amount of time, which allowed it to dry more favorably. In total, the LG combo used 2.4 kilowatt hours of electricity to wash and dry the 12 pound 5.5 kilo load of towels and bedding. Now with all these wash and dry tests out of the way, here's a chart of the information and it's fairly clear that the GE was quite a bit faster to wash and dry the loads. Although the smaller loads were very close to one another relatively. Why is this the case? Well, one key is the wash versus dry times. The LG favors a 30 minute wash cycle on the normal mode, assuming no special options, whereas the GE came in at nearly an hour. This means that the LG dryer runs a lot longer and our test used a little bit more electricity in most of these modes. The reason for this is due to the variance in the heat pump technology in both units. The GE is obviously a much larger unit and it's entirely due to the heat pump system being a standalone package at the top whereas the LG heat pump system is form fitted into the washer dryer casing. The size does make a difference. The LG unit is powered by an LG EAR072MA compressor that has a 3700 BTU hour capacity with 1084 watts of cooling capacity. It has an input of 300 watts of electricity and in our tests with the kilowatt meter, the unit never went over 600 watts at any period of time during the dry cycle. Comparatively, the GE unit in our test was powered by a highly BSA 804 SD 960 watt rotary DC compressor. This unit, as per the spec sheet I found, has a maximum cooling capacity of just under 5,000 BTU per hour. And if you looked at the power cords of both of these units, the black one being the GE and the gray one being the LG, the GE unit is significantly larger. Digging into the specs of both units, they actually have the same COP value of 3.6. The GE compressor system is simply a much larger version. Speaking of coils, obviously there's a huge concern with both of these units when it comes to cleanliness. Lint buildup on the coils would degrade the ability of both systems to dry, and after testing both units somewhat extensively, I cannot honestly say that one is better than another. The LG system, though, I think does have better access once the plastic cover is removed. However, the GE can handle some modifications to mitigate lint, such as the electrical taper gasket mod that I showed you in another video. Now, as a note, that video actually prompted an official response from GE. They ended up sending me a private message on Facebook. They noted that their choice of filter style was intentional. Their unit is ADA compliant and can be cleaned from the front, whereas the LG requires you to stand over the unit and requires additional clearance at the top of about four inches to remove and service its filter. In my opinion, the GE coils are slightly more solidly built and they can be cleaned with any sort of brush a little bit easier 
and both will need cleaned about every 50 loads, but you can form your own personal opinion on how easy it is to clean either of these. I will also note, the LG claims to have a coil cleaning technology via a water valve routed to the condenser box. However, when we tore down the LG unit, the water valve is only routed to one side on the evaporator coil, which I think is insufficient to properly clean the system, but I do think it's a great idea. There's plenty of room for GE to add such a system to their unit, just saying, I think that they should do this and it should have more than one hose on either side of the heat pump system. This would solve a lot of the future complaints I think these systems will have. And remember that if you like the review, make sure to use the links in the description to find and purchase either of the unit or any other unit that I suggest at the conclusion of the video. The only reason I mention this is it does help support the channel as I earn a little bit of income, which actually helped me make these videos. I don't have any sort of special deal with LG or GE doing the reviews. I had to pay retail price for both of these units, which was $2,500 for the GE unit and about $2,200 for the LG unit after all the requisite taxes. For the warranty comparison on both of these units, we have the following. The GE Ultrafast Combo has a one-year parts and labor warranty on all aspects of the unit. The heat pump has an additional five-year drying sealed system warranty, and if you watched my GE video, it's the whole unit is removable and replaceable as a package. And then the motor has a 10-year warranty on it as well. The LG Ventless Washer Dryer 2-in-1 Combo Unit has a one-year parts and labor warranty on all aspects of the unit. The drum has a three-year warranty, and then finally the direct drive motor has a 10-year warranty on it. The glaring difference is that the GE has a five-year warranty on its sealed system, which is the most expensive aspect of replacing a unit, whereas the LG does not mention any additional warranty on the drying system other than the one-year parts and labor warranty. When it comes to any possible points of failure, this is where both units end up being so new. We don't really know enough to figure out if there's anything for certain that's significantly wrong with these units. However, both of these units were built off of pre-existing washer chassis. The LG Ultrafast Combo is based on the GFW850SP unit, and the LG is essentially identical to the WM6500H series. For the GE, their washing machine has been on the market for nearly three years, and I've done a series of videos about that washing machine, which was about two years ago on basic error codes, troubleshooting, and maintenance. Since then, we have found out that the two major points of failure on the GE washer are in the electronics. The control board that operates the washing machine is often faulty, as well as the inverter motor that powers the spin cycles, and it fails frequently. I hope to do a video that shows the fixes on these units, as they are not cheap and could be lucrative for me. On the LG platform, their washing machines are arguably the best on the market in terms of reliability overall, but then again, that's not saying much as most modern appliances are terrible, really. LG drain pumps are a common fail point, but they are cheap and easy to replace for the most part, and the LG 2-in-1 uses a DC motor, which may be a little bit more expensive, but not too bad. Of course, though, both of these units marry a heat pump to dry the clothes, and as many know, LG has been hit with a class action lawsuit regarding their refrigerator compressors on the French door models as they were very prone to failure for a very long time. Although this uses a rotary compressor, which was not part of the failures and they may be more reliable, but that is a question mark. And it makes me wonder why they only put this one year sealed system warranty on the LG, which does not inspire confidence. One of the other questions that I've gotten about these units are about the gasket and mold issues. It's important to make sure that you use a tub clean cycle on any unit once a month, especially a tub cleaner like bleach, a fresh, or what we make at our shop, wash bomb, which is a citric acid and carbonate blend. If you use a cleaner and tub wash, the fantastic thing about both of these units is that they don't only do a tub wash, but they dry themselves as well in the tub clean cycle. Using their heat pump as a dehumidifier, which robs the mold of any possible points in which to grow, and I think this is fantastic. Also, as a note, the GE uses a microband gasket, which is similar to its GFW850 counterpart. The LG does not use this technology, but it does have spring and other balancers in the door that makes it easy to keep the door open when not in use, ensuring fresh air would possibly kill the molds, and I think both of these units are the best on the market for making sure that the mold does not appear. In the end, though, after all of these things, what unit is better? It is clear that the GE can dry the clothes, especially bedding, much faster. 
However, it does come at a huge cost of an additional eight inches of clearance at the top of the unit, which you may or may not have. Also, the additional 50 pounds of weight could be a concern on where you put it. The LG ThinQ app, I think, is far superior to the GE Smart HQ app, but if you don't like using Wi-Fi enabled settings, the GE interface, I think, is much easier to navigate, larger, and easier and more robust to use. Both units will take a huge quantitative leap over previous era all-in-one units that just use heating elements and condensers to dry your clothes. Even in the worst case scenario with the LG, the wash and dry times were about four and a half hours with the absolute worst loads, but on a comparative WM3998 condenser unit, it would take at least six hours to do the same thing. But as I've always said in these reviews, if you have the space, I would rather go with two separate units. The LG definitely has the best stack on the unit on the market with the LG wash tower, which is cheaper and works fantastic. And ironically, they just released a new wash tower with a heat pump that has a similar size to the GE heat pump using 220 volts, which would be really beneficial and it's still ventless technology. Ultimately though, it's up to you to choose which one is better. The LG has a better fitting profile with its size, but the GE dries better. The GE heat pump may be more reliable, but for the rest of the unit, the LG is likely going to last longer though. Which should you choose? Well, I think I would pick the pizza combos over either of these. Have a great day.